When we think about wind energy, we tend to think about wind turbines, but as we all really know, wind turbines are good at certain speeds of wind, and if the wind is blowing steadily, because they have a cutting speed, and of course they turn steadily at their best, and it's the kind of wind you get, I don't know, 10,000 feet up or so. But there's a whole range of wind energy available and it's usually thought of as being wind harvesting. It's that kind of wind energy that um, you really you can't use a turbine in and there's an awful lot of it. It's one of those things that is actually, um, surprisingly enough, better than batteries. It's uh, cheaper, they last longer, they produce more energy overall. Now, wind um, harvesting is a big field. Now, there are four main areas that you get wind harvesting in from wind effects. And these are um, vortex, which you'll know because that's the kind of stuff that uh, runs on an Aeolian harp. And Sean Fenn in 2004 came out with the wind belt. Uh, on a side note, when he came up with the wind belt, he said it was 10 to 30 times better than a normal turbine. Turns out that's not actually true. It's about the same or a little bit less. Uh, and, and that makes sense, really. But a wind belt costs somewhere around about $10 to make and is about, I think it's $125 a watt hour or something like that. But Vortex shedding is one type of energy harvesting that we're well aware of, but there are three other main types. One is galloping, the other is wake induced, and the final one is flutter. And we get wind flutter a lot of the time. If you're in a field and you see the grass waving about or the trees waving about, or a car goes down the motorway and it creates a gust, you will get wind flutter. There's an awful lot of wind flutter around, and wind flutter lends itself particularly well to these kind of structures, where you've got fixed structures with a flexible component, and it's in an area where you're going to get a burst of wind, and then nothing, and a burst of wind, and then nothing. So a lot of areas actually get that, and a lot of energy, particularly along roads and motorways, is available for harvesting using wind flutter. And here is what I came up with. This is a basic structure that flutters. Now, it's all one print. So you just print it. Here is an integral hinge. You don't have to do anything with it. Once you print it and push that, that hinge actually works. And the whole thing cost about 15 pence to make for plastic and electricity. There it is printed and off the bed. And as you can see, it's free to flutter. Now, this will flutter in a fluttering breeze, which happens in, uh, like I say, by uh, roadsides. But the other good thing about this, this will also flutter if you walk past it. Or if you put it on the floor or some stairs or a bridge that traffic's going over, it will flutter. And of course, it fluttering means it can be used to harvest energy. There's a number of ways you get energy out of that. One is a piezoelectric device. Another would be electrostatic, where it acts as a variable capacitor. Another would be magnetic induction, where we stick a couple of magnets and a coil on it. So there's quite a few ways to actually get the energy out of this flutter. The main issue with energy harvesting isn't that. The main issue with energy harvesting is creating devices that are super, super simple and yet still do the job. So like I said, this was 15 pence and I'm sure it could be a penny or two if it was mass produced. And that's what's important about it. It has to be super simple super cheap to produce because you need lots of them. I mean, this was inspired by a field of grass and by Catherine's Darwin leaf, but you still need loads of them. And you make loads of them really cheaply, pop these on a bridge, they're all fluttering away and doing a few microwatts, but as long as it's a couple of pennies each and they last for absolutely ages, that doesn't matter. That's the issue with them. So when choosing a natural generation schema with this, what you want is that generation schema is simple and cheap. And that's what's key about this. The fact that we could print it all in one go and it was super cheap and we didn't have to put a hinge in, the hinge was integral and printed and worked immediately. I took it off the bed plate, is important when it comes to this kind of thing. And so often when looking at devices, that is the issue. The issue is to make it simple and cheap and yet effective enough. The efficiency when it's super, super, super efficient, 
is expensive, which is why you don't find super, super efficient for something to function. Super tolerance is no good. For something to harvest, what you want is simplicity and cheapness and acceptable efficiency. To give it some thought, how would you use this to scavenge energy? What would you use to do it? Me, I'm probably going to use induction and I'll be doing something else on that where I actually scavenge the energy out of it. But that is a flutter device for harvesting energy from vibration and flutter wind. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like, subscribe and click the bell notifications.